Okay, sir. So, a very good afternoon to one and all present here. Today, we are gathered here in an expert talk of much talked about and the era of the fintech generation. Though cryptocurrencies have not reached anything like mainstream consumer acceptance, yet there is little doubt that they will form some part of the financial landscape in the future. Fintech in particular are likely to be positively impacted by the growth in cryptocurrency availability and adoption. Today, we are blessed to have with us an eminent speaker, Dr. Paritosh Basu. Dr. Basu is presently an academician with a background of 34 years of corporate experience, mainly in finance, accounting and reporting, strategic planning, and IT in Lake's functions. His last two corporate positions were that of global group controller and CFO of two large MNCs of India. Presently, he is full-time senior professor and chairperson of MBA law of NMIMS, University School of Business Management. Dr. Basu is a fellow member of both the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India and the Institute of Cost Accountants of India and a life member of the Computer Society of India. He's a digital evangelist and management trainer. He has chaired four world blockchain and AI summits held in Moscow, Dubai, and India. Dr. Basu has also delivered keynote speeches and led panel discussions in more than 100 national and internal summits, conferences, seminars, and webinars. We are fortunate enough to have Dr. Basu as an eminent speaker of the session. We welcome sir with folded hands and request to start the talk, sir. sir Thank please. you so much. Thank you, Professor Shilpi Kavita. And it is my pleasure and privilege to connect with uh, ISM Patna and uh, with you faculty members. And also it's my pleasure and privilege to interact with your students. I was wondering, uh, because I was so much preoccupied whether I should take up this assignment. One side is Professor Dasaraju and the other side is uh, uh, ISM Patna. Uh, so I thought that if we do not, we all crave for elite uh, platforms, elite conferences and seminars, uh, national level and international level events, but why not we go for a state level event and address the students? If we do not do, who will do? And that is yes. what drove me. And that is how I'm here with you. Thank you very much indeed uh, for, your, uh, uh, for your inviting me and it's my uh, pleasure and privilege uh, to interact with you and share my thoughts on this subject. Uh, I hope you can see my presentation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can see. We can see. Okay. Uh, the presentation is named Emergence of Central Bank Digital Currency from the Phoenix of Cryptocurrency. Uh, let me uh, tell you that uh, I'm on this subject since about 2018. And I'm a strong proponent of central bank digital currency. And during the course of this talk, I'll keep sharing with you my thoughts on the subject. Uh, and let me proceed. Uh, during the uh, course of this presentation, I'll be using a lot of graphics and a lot of quotes. And those are available freely from Google. Uh, I have no commercial objective behind using those except for propagating knowledge. Uh, this slide uh, talks about uh, quite a few papers which I've written on blockchain and uh, many other papers like I have written so far 29 papers on digital transformation on eight deep digital technologies which are being published in the National Journal, the Management Accountant of the Institute of Cost Accountants of India. And uh, students uh, can definitely refer to those, uh, uh, those uh, articles of mine. Uh, if you are interested to listen to some of my programs, you can go to YouTube channel. Uh, I'm available in YouTube. Just go to YouTube and type my name to get me in YouTube. Uh, I'm connected in LinkedIn in a big way. Roughly about 1,000 uh, uh, people are there with me all around from the world outside India, and I have total connection about 17,000 people in LinkedIn. So if you connect with me, you will get the benefit of seeing what 17,000 people uh, are thinking about whenever I share their thoughts with you in, any, in addition to my share, my thoughts. I'm also there in uh, Twitter. Uh, I have about 1,350 plus connections in Twitter. Uh, this is what at the center place, what you are seeing is my Moscow talk where I talked about the 
uh, human and ethical dimension of digital transformation. And my talk is also mainly today on the foundation of digital transformation, uh, because I'm going to talk about CBDC and cryptocurrency. CBDC here means central bank digital currency. Uh, my talk would be roughly about 45 to 50 minutes, and uh, uh, it will be distributed into four groups of thoughts. One is the genesis of coins and currencies in India. Uh, I'll then talk about the overview of blockchain technology and cryptocurrency. This will be followed by taxonomy of digital money and emergence and evolution of CBDC. And finally, I will uh, reflect on your questions and your reflection I will hear on my presentation. The presentation which I'm doing today to you uh, is based on a paper published in January 2021 uh, in the Management Accountant. And the name was exactly the same, Emergence of Central Bank Digital Currency from the Phoenix of Cryptocurrency. Uh, this uh, uh, paper is available uh, in LinkedIn as my anchor paper and also in my personal website, it is available. And I have a habit of uh, always writing uh, uh, article from the genesis part of it. I try to trust the genesis of anything before I write any article. So here also, it was not an exception. I tried to understand when money was born. As you know, in the primitive human civilization, we used to exchange goods. And, uh, uh, and at some point of time, uh, we started exchanging uh, uh, exchanging a media instead of directly the goods. That means one kg of rice is equal to uh, one kg or to one and a half kg of wheat. That kind of things went wrong before uh, the world uh, became civilized. And so uh, uh, the whole thing started with the, with a kind of uh, medium of exchange, which is cowrie shell. Cowrie shells, as you know, the source is from sea or ocean. Uh, and and uh, people used to collect uh, cowrie shell from the ocean side and used to exchange it for good. The first, first, ever, first ever coin came roughly about uh, 26 centuries before. That means six centuries before Christ, means uh, we are to, to 2022. So we are on 20th century after, uh, after Christ. Add to that six centuries, you are 26 centuries uh, before the currencies came in India. And India is one of the first few claimants of uh, any coin or currency. Uh, and in these currencies used to be found in the ruler's time of Magadha, Gandhara, Shakka, Shurashena, Panchala kingdoms. And at that point of time, it was neither known as a coin or a currency. It used to be known as Pana or Krishna Pana. Pana or Krishna Pana was the name of those items in previous. And you can see uh, these are the uh, kind, of, kind of pictures you can look at. Uh, where between 6th and 5th century BC, uh, these are the kind of medium of exchange India used to use. Uh, it is, uh, in history, it is said that the Lydian rulers of China used to use uh, coins, but I couldn't collect any picture of those coins. Uh, in Europe, in, when in India, it was 6th century BC, uh, uh, in Europe, it was uh, very recent. Uh, in, in fact, European history of coins is not very old. Uh, Rome in Italy uh, recorded that 211 BCE, means only 200 years before Christ, there were availability of coins. But if you ask for mohor or metal coins, it was uh, originally uh, introduced in India by Sher Shah Shuri, sometime in 1540 and 1545 AD, after death of Jesus Christ. Uh, and uh, when the Mughal rulers came to India, they introduced this. And the historical lineage of the word rupee, uh, which we use today, uh, or rupiah, which you use today, it goes to Shetsha Shuri. And uh, my research says that uh, the 
word rupee or rupia has been uh, having its uh, genesis from the word chandi in chandi in hindi is called rupa and uh, chandi a uh, rupa gives birth to rupee because the first coin of india was uh, crafted uh, in chandi and gold there from thereafter came in 1773 to 1775 we got the paper currency the first currency came and that time uh, the banks every bank used to use issue their currency because money used to circulate in local area so uh, bihar has a place of pride in that general bank of bihar and bengal uh, it used to be a combined bank of these two states at that point of time issued the first paper currency and you can see a picture of this it was a 10 rupee note at that point of time it uh, it came in 1868 Uh, uh uh the picture of this currencies of bihar and bengal bank is not available but the first picture uh, which is available is of of 1868 it was a 10 rupee note uh, and uh, uh, as you know that there was a act of 1861 which is called the paper currency act of 1861 uh, that time it was not reserve bank or central bank it was presidency bank and and uh, 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 only presidency banks used to have the power to issue central currency and 1861 uh, according to a publication of reserve bank of india for which i have given you the uh, sources here uh, the uh, this publication says that uh, uh, actually this act uh, heralded the currency in india at that point of time 1 rupee used to be denominated as 1 gold mohar so that time uh, rupee used to be measured in terms of value of gold so 1 rupee worth of gold that time used to be a 1 rupee coin instead of gold it used to be in metal so the backing factor was gold also, although the metal was the medium of preparation of the item and this is the kind of some of the other currencies uh, which you can see here and in those days also we used to see currencies of highest denominations of 100 to 500 so this is the kind of uh, history of uh, uh, coins and currencies in india as on date uh, what you find in india you have uh, 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 rather uh, three kinds of currency and money the first type of currency and money is called fiat cash or currency uh, fiat cash and currency essentially is equal to the paper currency which is issued and controlled by reserve bank of india Uh, printed by reserve bank of india which we use day to day uh, which is gradually getting replaced by uh, upi unified uh, payment platform and we are using google pay and phone pay etc etc so that gradually reducing the fiat currency in paper form the fiat currency is also are of another two types one is called central bank money and another is called commercial bank money a central bank money is the money which is in circulation between central bank and its scheduled banks in india where this particular portion of money circulated in india are utilized for only interbank settlement of transaction we common people or citizens of india do not have any access to this particular group of money which is called central bank money these are only between banks and set and between the bank of india and other banks the settlement takes place another form of money which we do not see in <laughs> our hands or wallets uh, but we use it almost every day uh, is the central uh, is the commercial bank money suppose uh, when i uh, when i get salary from my organization my organization pays out of its uh, money available in its bank account now that money available in its bank account is either coming from its sales or its profit or some loan given by by some bank or its own share capital introduction now these are not paper currencies these are currencies which are there in the bank and that bank uh, uh gives it to my bank and my bank gives it to me and i i use this uh, hardly any any part of it i withdraw from bank as a cash but i use it for my credit card payment other payments my rent payment or whatever payment that the money circulates within the banking channel and it doesn't never see the form of cash so this is called commercial bank money 
the beauty of whole thing is that the central bank money which the central bank issues those are available with the backing of uh, uh, government uh, government's own own commitment that reserve bank of india governor signs it and says that i am i am bound to pay so much of money equivalent in exchange of this paper currency the same thing is also applicable suppose a bank has got uh, 1000 crore in its own account uh, that 1000 crore uh, money is essentially vis-a-vis -vis the central bank's commitment to settle this 1000 crore by reserve bank of india money given to commercial bank so whatever money you see in circulation in india are controlled by only one agency and that is reserve bank of india because of the authority given to it as the central bank of india not is not not any currency of india is backed by any collateral tangible collateral it is backed by the commitment of the uh, of the uh, central bank of india and the and and back to back commitment from government of india the point here is that central bank of india for that purpose maintains certain reserves in in terms of uh, in terms of gold uh, or foreign assets or whatever those i don't want to get into it the point i am trying to make that any currency other than the cryptocurrency which you are hearing these days <laughs> are controlled by government of india now let us get into the uh, blockchain technology and cryptocurrency what is blockchain technology uh, let's first understand that and then we go to cryptocurrency and try and understand how blockchain uh, is the platform through which cryptocurrency operates the blockchain is a part of the mesh technology of the world uh, uh, which is a, of course a digital technology area Uh, of the ICT information and communication technology, uh, it is a, a network, uh, network of computers. Now, the primitive form when in 1970s India saw the first computerization. Of course, in the world it came somewhere around 1950s. There used to be a central server, only one server, and all these computers, which you suppose this is a bank, uh, this is a bank. which the bank is utilizing these are the bank branches and all bank branches used to control or used to be controlled by one central connection one central server which is called the centralized banking channel or central server channel with the course of development in in computerization and data storage system and data networking system we saw the hub and spoke model this is the hub and spoke model where there used to be uh, certain hubs around suppose these are each state the banks of each state is connected to a central server of each state and they finally all the state level branches of the same bank is connected to the central central level branch of the headquarter of that particular bank so this is called decentralized working system but it is still not a network peer to peer network in a decentralized working system the data sort storage system are there in decentralized way first storage is at the computer level second storage is in the decentralized storage level and the third connectivity is to uh, central connection so uh, this particular central storage system was not is not connected with this particular system these are not connected now if this particular person has to speak with this particular person or this particular system it has to come via the central system so this is a decentralized network where none of the networks are connected with each other except for the hub portion that this particular group are connected with each other but in this this particular computer and this particular computer are not connected in a blockchain technology every single computer is connected with every single computer in this picture you don't see any hub and spoke model Uh, the connection is essentially like this look at this picture every single computer with an arrow is connected with every single other computer and like look at this this particular computer is connected with this computer this computer this computer 
this computer. So here is a representational picture where four computers are connected with another, the fifth computer. And all those four computers are reverse connected with the fifth computer also. So essentially what happens, essentially what happens in this kind of system, uh, uh, the, uh, it is called a decentralized network or decentralized data storage system where any transaction that takes place, uh, suppose this takes place between this computer and this computer, rest of the other computers will be having the same transactional details with this. That means any transaction in which you are not a party, your, your computer is not a party to that transaction, will be able to see the transaction done by these people in the data storage because all transactions are stored in all computers. The reason behind it, it is called a peer-to-peer -peer network because in a peer-to-peer -peer network, everybody will be able to see every other transaction what is happening in the network. And the beauty of that network is that I am not known by my name, my phone number, my mail ID, or my other card number or my PAN card number. I am only known by a hashtag, which is my public key. I am known by a, say, a 50 uh, letter or, or 30 letter or 70 letter hashtag that is known, that is by which I am known. Nobody knows who am I. I'm known by a public key. When I enter my computer to do the transaction, of course, I use my private key. That private key is my own, which nobody comes to know. And all the transactions which is done are not stored in transaction form or digital form. Those are cryptographed or encrypted by complex encryption algorithms. So transaction prima facie are not visible inside the computer straight away. Suppose you are going to hack a computer which is in a blockchain technology network. You will not be able to hack it unless and until you will be able to de-encrypt the transaction. And for de-encrypting the transaction, you must have to know the encryption technology which has been used by the computer network. Uh, or the blockchain platform. Just give me one minute, please. Sorry. So uh, in a blockchain network, which is a dual key mechanism, transactions being cryptographed, Every now and every single transaction cryptograph is also called a distributed data storage system or DDSM. This is also called distributed ledger technology, DLT. A blockchain, if, if my name is Paritosh and my nickname is X, you can say nickname of blockchain technology is DLT. And in distributed ledger technology, every single computer has got every single transaction. This essentially is the principle followed for public network or cryptocurrency type of transaction. When the designs are done for private blockchain technology, where everybody need not know every single transaction, the scripting of the blockchain technology is done a little differently where the peer-to-peer -peer network is created on a need-to-know basis. Some other day, if I get an opportunity, I'll discuss with you all this in greater detail. <laughs> so, uh, so it is a cryptographically enabled transaction. Any transaction when passed, immediately it is encrypted and stored in the system. So summarizing this particular uh, slide is a peer-to-peer -peer network, distributed ledger technology, Every transactions are encrypted on a real-time online basis. People enter the system with a private key after the KYC is completed. And people are not known by their phone number or their mail ID or their name or PAN card number or other card number or any other number It is which you share. It's only known by a public key, nothing else. And every single node, which is the participating transaction party, 
is connected with the every single other node. Then there's a common perception about, among people that is uh, blockchain technology equal to cryptocurrency or is cryptocurrency is equal to blockchain technology? Answer is no. A blockchain technology is not equal to cryptocurrency and a cryptocurrency is not equal to blockchain technology. Blockchain technology is only the platform which is used for transaction of cryptocurrency. Uh, because uh, for cryptocurrency, the basic principle of uh, cryptocurrency is that it's a private network and, and it is not a permission network where anybody and everybody can enter. Of course, nowadays, any cryptocurrency network is also after KYC is completed. And, and, uh, and, and this particular technology is based on the distributed ledger technology. So that because every single transaction is stored in every single computer and there is a principle of mining that means you cannot do it. Suppose A or B are having Bitcoin or A wants to buy Bitcoin from B. Uh, the transaction has to be approved by some miners. I'll explain to you the role of miner. And, and the miners should be uh, quite a large number of miners to approve one transaction. Uh, it is a very huge computing capability uh, oriented, uh, oriented platform where Miners will go into the depth of uh, the transactions to prove whether B has a, a, a sellable cryptocurrency with him, which B will be able to sell to A. It does mean, it does mean that if you have a cryptocurrency methodology where a miner, a set of miners have to approve the cryptocurrency, it needs huge computing power utilization not by one computer, but by many computers of many miners. And it, it, it roughly estimates that about eight to 10 minutes are, are of computing is required for approving one transaction. So imagine how much quantum of, mon, quantum of electricity that will be uh, consumed by, uh, by computers for passing one cryptocurrency transaction. That's why it is said, that cryptocurrency transactions are not at all green and they are absolutely energy inefficient. Uh, here, is a, uh, here is a roadmap uh, which has happened since the inception of blockchain technology in 1991. Blockchain technology came into being in 1991. Of course, uh, I have a little different view. It came a little before that. Uh, let's assume that blockchain came in 1991. 18 years after that came the uh, cryptocurrency or the first cryptocurrency called Bitcoin. Uh, there is a famous paper by uh, Satoshi Nakamoto who released a white paper on cryptocurrency, which is then named as Bitcoin. Uh, there is a controversy all around the world whether Satoshi Nakamoto is by himself uh, a person or a group of computer technologists. Uh, I do not know. Uh, Three years before I met uh, one gentleman in a Hyderabad conference on blockchain, where he claimed himself that he was the member of Satoshi Nakamoto's team. So no one knows who is Satoshi Nakamoto. Let's forget about that. But we know about it that Bitcoin uh, is, is a, a cryptocurrency, which is the first of its kind in the world, and it's still live and it's working. I'll share with you some data about Bitcoin. So why? A cryptocurrency came when the central bank digital central bank currencies were operating so nicely all around the world in all sovereign countries of the world. Why there is a need for cryptocurrency? Need for cryptocurrency came from the disgruntled mindset and the heightened anguish of people. What is this? In 2008 came the subprime crisis of the world, as you know, and one after the other banks failed. Uh, the, the biggest bank of the world that failed is Lehman Brothers. And you can understand how much people, have, how many people have lost how much money because of the failure. So uh, this group of people who are connected with uh, Shatoshi Nakamoto, he thought to a point that why a group of people called Central Bank of India or Central Bank of any country will control the destiny, financial destiny of general mass. 
why not the general mass themselves can control their financial destiny through a computerization system which is in a network where everybody knows everything with total transparency and total safety in the form of encryption that is how the cryptocurrency was born cryptocurrency was born out of one driver and that driver is nobody should control our destiny nobody should issue currency control currency we will issue we will have a system by which there will be a limited issue of currency and it will be completely tokenized or digitalized and the entire operation will, will happen without the supervision and control of any human and without the whims and fancies of any government or any agency to control us it will be controlled by technology and that technology will be encrypted thus it was born uh, my research says that uh, uh, evolution of cryptocurrency which people say was by satoshi nakamoto in 2010 it must be, might be having its genesis in 1998 uh, where a gentleman called wei dai uh, wei dai uh, he uh, developed a digital uh, currency or digi digitally pseudonymous transferring system which is called b money and why it is being called pseudonymous because a pseudonym is because nobody uh, knows what is who is who and who is transferring and who is buying uh, so that is why it is pseudonymous and 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 it happens within a system in 1998 another gentleman by his name nick shabo uh, he also ideated the bit gold but these two currencies or these two thought process could never find the delight in the form of a practice system like satoshi nakamoto's bitcoin in 2009 now there is another school of thought which says that wei dai nick shabo and satoshi nakamoto are are the three names of the same person it does mean that if this theory is okay then 1998 uh, was the was the uh, was the first point of time when uh, uh, when when this uh, uh, bit, uh, cryptocurrency was thought through and way dai uh, nick shabo and and satoshi nakamoto is the same person who came up with his or his idea there is another school of thought which says that satoshi nakamoto still lives in usa but nobody knows who is what but people know that cryptocurrency and digital currency is there in the form of bitcoin okay so uh, there are so many bitcoins are in, in the world today 16 so many bitcoins i'm sorry so many cryptocurrency i already said that at the moment there are 16000 cryptocurrencies in the world you can think of if 16000 cryptocurrencies work in the marketplace and used as a medium medium of settlement of transaction across about 193 odd countries of the world it will be a complete pandemonium it will be a complete pandemonium and again people know cryptocurrency in various name it is called virtual currency it is called digital currency it is called digital cash digital token digital assets crypto coin and crypto token so there are many names many thing of the same thing is there uh, and why it is called a cryptocurrency because it is by use of encryption the whole thing is secured and safe and that is precisely the reason any currency which is controlled by cryptography or encryption is called a cryptocurrency the crypto word has been borrowed from the digital world and currency has been borrowed from what i have showed you uh, 6000 bc in india what has happened currency means anything which you use which is in circulation for exchanging a medium of settlement of liabilities or assets uh, what was the basic fundamental principle by which cryptocurrencies were designed uh, it is a distributed authority nobody has got authority it's controlled addition any cryptocurrency at the very beginning of the currency it says maximum currency that will be issued is so much like uh, bitcoin is issued 21 million bitcoin can be also is only issued 
it has an authentication system and it is a monitoring system and it was a recording system which is safe, secure, and transparent. Uh, no bank of Niza Bank of India, no central bank, no central authority is an intermediation authority for this. It has a unique safety net in the form of blockchain and cryptography. And, and hacking any, any blockchain technological platform is near impossible. So essentially the flavor you are getting from this particular slide is that cryptocurrency is a centrally, uh, uh, centrally controlled system, which is not by any human being or being any human agency, but by a technology called blockchain. And that technology uses encryption, that technology uses a safety and security system, and that technology is used distributed ledger technology where everybody knows everything, or everybody can have every single transaction. So this is the picture of that, which I was explaining to you, the introduction of miner. So suppose I want to buy, a, uh, buy some Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency, say Ethereum or Dogecoin, et cetera, I announce the first I get into the uh, public blockchain uh, through my KYC, which has been recently introduced KYC. So I get into and announce that I want to buy it. Suppose this gentleman is B, he says that I want to sell it to A. So all these talking points are happening through computer entries. Now the moment B announces that I want to sell it to A, uh, there is a group of people who are the miners. They will they have the authority against some reward and reward is in Bitcoin only. They, they try and see whether B has got sufficient coins which he has uh, with authority with him. So what he does, this, this earlier 50% of the miner used to approve one transaction. Now I believe it has been reduced. And these miners are mostly used to be located in China and China has stopped this mining totally because electricity consumption is very high. So in any case, wherever the miners are there, doesn't matter. They were anywhere in the world because it's a computerized network through, through cyberspace. So that suppose these four miners have approved that this transaction can go through. This goes through and sits as a block and goes added to the block and which any participant in the block can do it. Now, can I, can, it is commonly said that Millions and millions of people are getting into Bitcoin network. Answer is no. If you and I want to buy a Bitcoin, I do not go directly into the blockchain technology platform of Bitcoin. I have to essentially go to a cryptocurrency exchange. Like we go to brokers for buying shares, we have to go to cryptocurrency exchange. And they, those exchanges are participating in this blockchain network. And they will say, that, okay, I have brought so much of Bitcoin or so much of, I have sold so much of Bitcoin for you. And they will come, they will create a wallet for you in that system. And that wallet will be shared with you. That is what, how blockchain technology works. This is a picture as late as 26 January, 2022. It is giving January 21 to January 22, the price movement of Bitcoin. It was below 30,000 per Bitcoin, $30,000 per Bitcoin in January 22. And this kind of volatility is occurred. So it has picked some, somewhere around 68, 69,000 per dollar, the dollar per Bitcoin. It has picked somewhere in November, between November and December. Uh, and it has, before that, it reached another peak of about $62,000, $63,000 per one single Bitcoin. And it has also scaled down to a trough of $30,000 per Bitcoin. So it is an extremely volatile asset. It is an asset class, financial asset class. It's called a crypto asset class. And it is extremely, extremely volatile. So it's 52 week low in this period, which you are seeing 52 week period. It's as low as it was $28,000 per Bitcoin and it as high as $68,990 per Bitcoin. As of now, Bitcoin in circulation is 18.94 uh, 
million and maximum bitcoin that can be issued is 21 million so once this will be one or once all the 21000 bitcoins are exhausted which a new bitcoin can be issued by the system only when a miner approves a transaction one doesn't know what will happen it could be possible at that point of time the software will be changed and the uh, and the commission to be given to a miner will be by the person who buys or sells so one doesn't know uh, uh, in 24 hours time on 26th of january uh, there were 266941 transaction in this platform and the fee average fee for transaction was 1.49 dollars so uh, and the volatility index is 0.56 so you can imagine this picture gives you a uh, to me it looks like an horror that if i am an asset class investor called bitcoin what kind of risk i am taking suppose i have entered to buy this and for this long period i had to wait to reach the price sometime here where i can think of selling it at a, at a, at the same price and i have to wait further to sell it at a profit here or a profit here so it's a very volatile asset class and uh, to me it doesn't make sense to get, get a common man getting into this kind of asset class for investment uh let me uh, tell you uh, cryptocurrencies face a huge criticism uh this criticism sir uh, it has been established that cryptocurrencies are used for a lot of illegal activities including drug drug mafia terrorism it is extremely volatile and extremely vulnerable and and it is extremely power consuming the praises against for it is however they have also have a praise for that they are portable divisible and inflation resistance uh, like rupee value reduces or increases with uh, inflation and depletion uh, cryptocurrency doesn't bother about any in inflation there are huge amount of controversy i don't want to get into it but let me tell you one thing when cryptocurrencies and bitcoin came in india in the world the the most uh, most uh, uh, respected economy and the largest economy economy of the world that america they have got four regulators and the four regulators uh, could not decide what exactly a cryptocurrency is or what big exactly bitcoin is the security exchange commission which controls the financial securities like shares and bonds they call cryptocurrency as a security the commodity future trading commission they called it it's a property uh, the financial crime enforcement center they called it a currency and internal revenue services call it a property so three different opinions were there about cryptocurrency which is very very unfortunate uh, uh professor shilpi uh, i will take another 15 minutes is it right sure sir sure sir okay uh, uh i was reading a recent paper uh, by price waterhouse coopers which is called pwc and their global crypto leader he said the general public will be one of the biggest beneficiaries of cbdc what is cbdc when a cryptocurrency is used by central bank uh, it is called central bank digital currency so like me perhaps uh, this gentleman henry arselian mean arsen arselian sorry henry arselian he is also of the same view that general public will be one of the biggest beneficiary of sub cbdc as it will give them access for the first time to digital form of central bank money and that's a big milestone in the evolution of money so i am a big propagator of cbdc in a conference in delhi uh, i uh, in about 3 years back i say i said that private cryptocurrencies will never be uh, allowed by the world as a medium of settlement of course bahama has already allowed that uh, uh, but uh, but i personally feel private cryptocurrencies like bitcoin ethereum etc etc will always be considered as a as a asset class to be used by risky investors 
when they want to have money or or want to make profit you must have heard about this gentleman called charlie munger charlie munger is warren buffett's second man he is a he is a lawyer and architecture a design guy uh, he said a very interesting thing and without distorting his comment i want to read this comment and you can, you will be able to make out what he said he said i don't welcome i repeat i don't welcome a currency that is so useful to kidnappers and extortionists and so forth nor do i like shoveling out a few extra billions and billions and billions of dollars to somebody who just invented a new financial product out of thin air and when he says that shoveling billions of dollar it means mining commission that means a miner gets mining commission free of cost so he becomes a, a bitcoin owner which is 68000 dollars at some point of time because of approving a transaction and munger says i think i should say modestly that with i should say modestly that i think the whole damn development is disgusting and contrary to the interest of civilization so he feels that the entire development of private cryptocurrency is disgusting and contrary to the interest of human civilization he does he does want to give one final meaning that cryptocurrency will not do good to human civilization that is his comment now where we are in the world we are in the world here when central bank digital currency has come uh, let's not let's not uh, argue one point at least that government which are using currency can also use digital currency uh, because advances in financial technology are impelling central banks to react to emergent challenges from the private sector and address weaknesses in payment system policy makers are concerned about the potential loss of monetary control and there is momentum in their institutions to examine the potential effect of introducing retail cbdc so central bank uh, digital currency uh, if we introduce then perhaps we will be able to take away the fiat currencies in the form of paper currency and we will be able to create the technology in such a manner that my computer can make a cash book of myself of all the transactions i have done even from 1 rupee to 1 crore of rupees and if that digital currency is given to a common citizen then paper currency and various types of bank account will be completely taken out so there is a controversy or there is a question which is still to be addressed that if central bank digital currency is introduced which essentially has uh, emerged from the ashes of uh, of uh, uh, cryptocurrency why i am using the word uh, from the phoenix of cryptocurrency is because according to me the intention of issuing cryptocurrencies like ethereum or or uh, bitcoin or dogecoin or any other stable coin etc etc Uh, will essentially die down and the dream of using them as a medium of settlement and a tender for valid tender for uh, transaction performance i believe that will not stay good so thou it will thus it will be the phoenix uh, whose from whose ashes the cbdc has already brought why uh, since global financial crisis came in 2008 uh, the entire central banking system of the world thought that there there is a need for introducing a sense of trust uh, which is deficient in our existing system and behavior and functioning uh, of regulators are also uh, at times are not in the right direction so why not we bring the whole system to a uh, worldwide codified uh, digital currency system which will be called uh central bank digital currency efficacies of policies regulation regulation and systems of central banks for oversight can be introduced into a, into a dynamic system of business through central bank digital currency and suppose the central bank digital currency for india which is called cbdr central bank digital rupee can be jolly well exchange 
with the central bank digital rupee of US, US or UK or China or for that matter any country. Today, those transactions are denominated between fiat currency. US dollar is a fiat currency, Indian rupee is a fiat currency, and from the demand and supply situation, the exchange rates are determined. Similarly, central bank digital currencies of various countries can also have their own uh, 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 digital currencies. Moreover, that the general people uh, are looking for this kind of uh, currencies is being seen uh, uh, because of the overwhelming speed in which digital transformation is happening in India today. Uh, you go to any shop, for that matter, I was going, I was in a Velpuriwala shop. Uh, some guy came uh, to that Velpuriwala shop and uh, a very, very, very common man. And he didn't take out his money from pocket. He, he took out his phone and scanned the code uh, QR code of uh, displayed by the shop uh, Velpuriwala, a roadside Velpuriwala using a QR code and the payment is being made by Paytm or GP. So that's if that is what we can use, uh, and that still is a fiat currency, why not we can use central bank digital currency? That is the biggest question. So central bank respond to digital currency. Uh, so retail CBDC perhaps will be the next medium of payment going forward very soon. Now, this is called the taxonomy of currency. Uh, uh, taxonomy as currency is uh, this indicated by four indicators. One is widely accessible, digital, central bank control, and token-based. Token-based mean digital token, okay? Now, when if you see a central bank digital token and a central bank digital currency has got all these features. It is widely accessible. It is digital. It is controlled by digital banks because this particular block is covering all the four features and it is token based. Whereas private digital tokens, which is a Bitcoin or a Ethereum, it doesn't have any central bank listed uh, uh, control because it is outside the central bank control. It is digital, it is widely acceptable, and it is taken based, but it is not central bank control or central bank issued. So according to me, private digital tokens are definitely not the case which we are looking for. So central bank digital currency uh, uh, is different from cash because a cash is not a token, tokenized item. A cash is a case. That is why it is not within the domain of digital, because the domain of digital, domain of digital uh, is uh, cash is outside the domain of digital. It is it is outside this blue blue domain. Uh, it is a token. Why it is a token? Because the token has a value, ten rupee token or five rupee token or, or, or one rupee coin or uh, five hundred rupee token. But it's not a digital token, it's a fiat token. So cash is not a digital currency, whereas uh, uh, a, a central bank digital currency is a digital currency with central bank issue, whereas a private digital currency doesn't have the backing of central bank. I'll finish uh, my talk very soon. So this is the, uh, uh, another four, three, four minutes I'll close. This is the worldwide situation of central bank, uh, digital currency introduction in the world. Uh, these are the countries uh, which have already issued proof of concept, that is the uh, purple color. The uh, orange color, the pilot uh, project is on in these countries. The green color countries, including India, research is on. And uh, uh, some other countries, that is the blue countries, they have already launched the They've already launched the currency. The central bank digital currency has been launched in these currencies. And only a small country here, which has canceled, uh, perhaps it will launch in course of time. So uh, present CBDC status in India is that Reserve Bank of India has ruled out the possibility of recognizing any uh, digital currency in India, private digital currency. 
as you know, in the uh, in before the parliament, uh, uh, there is a uh, bill pending for introduction of digital currency. However, the national strategy for blockchain, as already issued by the National Institute of Smart Governance in India, uh, the objective of this is to facilitate digital currency and permission blockchain. So this particular policy will help application of blockchain technology in hundreds of uh, items like voting, like uh, booking of old age home, like controlling of temperature, uh, like, uh, like healthcare facility, like agriculture, many. If I get a chance, I'll speak to you about my thoughts on blockchain applications. But that uh, this blockchain application and this policy will also help a central bank digital rupee. Uh, uh, in the worldwide position, IMF has already issued a working paper. Uh, US has already issued a, 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 a particular consultation paper for 22 questions to be debated by people because US feels that people should debate and a consensus should emerge for introduction of digital currency in USA. United Kingdom uh, is exploring the authority of creating this new currency, which will be used by household. And it is being thought to that by 2025, in the United Kingdom, uh, people like us, general common mass, will be using cryptocurrency. Uh, United, European commissions have substantially progressed well in terms of issue of cryptocurrency and central bank digital currency. China has already tested four types of digital wallets, including uh, for retail, for banking, between bankers, between central bank and the retail bankers, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and China has already issued a global rule for CBDC. Platform for multiple CBDC uh, has already been uh, uh, tested by Singapore. Dubai has uh, issued a consultation paper, and I believe they are already in pilot base. And India, I believe the platform has been tested. Uh, we are waiting for uh, the central bank digital currency oriented laws to be passed. And post that, we should be able to issue. So what is my final comment? My final comment is central bank digital currency will definitely emerge. It has to emerge and it must emerge. Uh, private cryptocurrency should never ever be allowed to, to, uh, to be uh, issued for and used for any settlement uh, because private cryptocurrencies are uh, are not controlled by any central government, and these are not in public interest. And, and uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, private cryptocurrencies will be allowed as an asset class, no two opinion about it. Multilateral agencies like International Monetary Fund, World Bank, Bank of International Settlement, they are already working on developing a, a central code of standard all over the world and uh, my prophecy is that all the sovereign countries of the world, as we have seen in that particular globe, uh, world map, will ultimately converge to a centralized code of standards, international code of standards for introduction of central bank digital currency in their respective currencies. So thank you very much indeed. Uh, I, I leave it to you now, and I would like to reflect on your thoughts and your questions now. Really, sir, very informative session. And this is the uh, topic which is being talked about in the, in the current news, newspaper, everywhere it is being talked about whether the private cryptocurrencies will be allowed to or not. A big deal of questions also and a big deal of politics also, as I should say. That is why the even the politicians are still taking a time to make judgments on this. Uh, I think that is, I believe that is also politically. My important. prophecy is whether I'll survive on that day or not. Ultimately, private cryptocurrencies will come up as a class asset class, which will be used by only high net worth individuals. And CBDC will come as a digital currency. And maybe paper currency will ultimately die. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I also agree with you, sir. Sir, uh, we have some students volunteers. Yes, please. From the Very PGDM well. students. So uh, they are going to put some questions here. So uh, uh, right now they I've can, got a question. They can on raise their voice. They can raise yes. their voice question or they can yes, put sir. it in the chat box and you can 
you can yes sir yes sir uh, one question is from amrind uh, kumar jha of pg dear he has put a question beyond a method for payment what are the other functions of cryptocurrencies uh, so far as central bank digital currencies are concerned this is a medium of currency uh, for uh, for methods of payment settlement of transactions and and it's a medium of exchange but private cryptocurrencies uh, although they were intended to be method of payment uh, or 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 medium of settlement like libra of facebook it was in that in Lib facebook wanted to be the banker of the world by introducing a private cryptocurrency called libra but uh, the world scuttled its effort and i don't think it will ever come but ultimately what is happening which you have seen in that uh, black screen i have shown you it is ultimately uh, private cryptocurrencies are emerging as asset class like mutual fund which will continue to remain as an asset class but again my view is that if that asset class or if that value cannot be exchanged for settlement of transaction then definitely ultimately it will die its natural death so to answer your question in one sentence uh, ultimately digital currencies will be medium for settlement and not storage of value of course like when you have a savings bank money you call it a storage of value it will be to that extent storage of value okay sir sir another question from shubham anand of pgdm he has put a question that why to invest in crypto if i have other options of investment like shares and security which don't have vulnerability or forgettable passwords and big stuff like blockchain and cryptography which can be deceitful for the common and uneducated man of india a very i could not have agreed with more he is 200% correct why to surrender myself to so much of volatility uh, why to get into the whims and fancies of market and mood uh, i have many other asset classes so why should i expose my money into uh it is i completely agree with you no two opinion about it okay sir and another question from suman kumar of pgdm he has asked a big question that i hear cryptocurrencies are used for illicit illegal activities is this true it has been proved that those are used by drug mafias those are used by terrorists those are used for uh, transactions with ulterior motive and exchange of uh, weapons it is true it has been established many a times and rackets have been busted also and the last question from the uh, we are putting these questions from the fb actually some students have joined on fb also and some of the student volunteers here so when rajnish kumar singh has put a question that for that he had to have separate session he has asked how can i start investing in cryptocurrencies how can you start there are a lot of exchanges in india called wazirex and all to go to their website get yourself registered do your kyc and then start asking for investment so put money into your bank account uh, and uh, uh, tell the exchange to buy the cryptocurrency of course uh, 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 that's a that's a problem in india because you will not be able to buy cryptocurrency anywhere in the world if you want to buy it from outside definitely you have to send money outside and your remittance limit is 250000 dollars but i believe central bank of india is discouraging all the commercial banks for lending for cryptocurrency buying etc so uh, i personally feel that uh, cryptocurrency buying uh, in india perhaps is possible but uh, this budget will come up with lot of taxation issues etc the picture to me is not clear what is what is there now and what is going to emerge, uh, emerge. but i can tell you with conviction this much that you as a you, uh, uh, the main principle of blockchain technology is network that will not be permitted because it's a network now of certain exchanges and each exchange is not directly also a miner so my personal feeling is that uh, there is no point nobody knows what is going to happen with cryptocurrencies so why to stake your claim one bitcoin is equal to 60000 dollars oh, yes sir tomorrow uh, it's 30000 elon marks declares that i will accept payment against my electrical vehicles of tesla in cryptocurrency bitcoin rises up elon must say no i will not bitcoin falls down kya fayda hai aise currency 
Okay, Alok Sina has raised their hand. Alok, uh, you can put the question yourself to sir. Yes, yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, yes you, you are. Audible. Okay. You can open First your video all, also if allowed. Yes, open your video. Okay, Once I ask the question, I will definitely do so. Uh, first of all, sir, a very good afternoon uh, uh, and all the faculty members, just said Alok Sena. And I feel so proud uh, that uh, I was a part of this session and I, uh, I I was introduced to such a, a great member and your cooperation was solemnly solicited, sir. Uh, but my question is that uh, since countries differ substantially in the extent to which they are actively exploring the digital currencies and in their proximity to issuing such currencies, so I just want to know from your side, sir, that how does the International Monetary Fund view the global development and implementation of CBDC in the longer run? See, International Monetary Fund or World Bank or Bank of International Settlement, they are not any banker. They are multilateral agencies and they are also custodian of a lot of deposits on behalf of various countries, right? which is that's why it's called International Monetary Fund. So the role of multilateral agencies in central bank digital currencies would be to create a code of standards because whenever you program a central bank digital currency or whenever you decide the policy procedure and processes by which you will control a digital currency of any country, you can design systems and processes and policies according to your country's requirement. So if 193 countries creates 193 aviation policies, there will be every day 200 or 250 aircraft, air crashes, right? As you know, there is one aviation yes, standard of the world, which is used by all the countries of the world without any comma full stop change. Why it is so? Because one plane crash, if it is not manned by anybody else, at least one aircraft will die. And if it is a passenger aircraft, yes. 250 to 600 people will die. So, so when you are risking uh, by flying an aircraft, uh, you are risking human life. And when you are risking currency, you are risking people's money. So definitely central bank digital currency, if it is an accepted phenomenon going forward using blockchain technology, then there has to be some central policies, which country oriented, again, which is world oriented. And the world orientation and world standard will come from multilateral agencies like IMF and uh, and 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 uh, uh, board of Inter bank of international settlement to tell you very frankly america themselves are not very sure what they are going to do that's why they have issued a consultation paper with 22 questions so america is going to decide its cryptocurrency policy that is uh, central bank digital currency policy based on people's opinion that emerge so if a country takes people's opinion, then IMF should take the world opinion, right? So the role of these multilateral agencies are to bring a, a sense of semblance, a sense of code of standards into all this. Would I explain your question? Yeah, absolutely, sir. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now the next question is from Somnath. He's also from PGDM. So Somnath, please put your question to sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, my question to you is, uh, first of all, thanks to you uh, for sharing such a valuable uh, information about CBDR. Uh, my question is, is India in a position to approve CBDC? Because lots of factors are considerable, like uh, education, technical knowledge, illiterate sections of society, like uh, if we talk about farmers, laborers, rickshaw pullers, etc. So these are uh, the factors which must be considered uh, before issuing a CBDC. And I want to add one more question to it. Uh, what is the purpose to launch it if we have Google Pay, Phone Pay, Paytm, etc.? And uh, we have uh, already uh, reached the form of digitalization with proper records. Thank you, sir. Sumnath, very, very good question, and your anxiety is well taken. Let me keep answering your question, Sumnath, and I'm so happy that you have raised this question. First of all, 49% of the Indian population is now using smartphones. Yes, sir. And 
and India has started issuing uh, various uh, technologies, uh, softwares in vernaculars. And India is also now the largest producer, producers of smartphone of the world. So uh, I am very, very hopeful that by the time CBDC is introduced, of course, fiat currency in the form of paper currency will continue. Uh, and maybe five years down the line, 80 to 90% of Indian population will be using uh, uh, smartphones and that smartphone will be in vernacular language. And if, if today, uh, I, that, that example I gave you of the Velpudiwala, if a rickshawala or a common man can now pay me, make payment for Velpudi, like uh, you buy a, a Macburger uh, from, uh, uh, from USA and pay in cryptocurrency, and if phone pay is used, then going forward, uh, every smartphone user will be using a, a computer or soft or a smartphone based payment system for making payment. So there, there is no doubt that five years down the line, India will be a digital uh, payment user across the board, across the nook and corners of the country. Uh, barring, of course, a, a few illiterate, but it is also my hope that by another five years down the line, uh, where a young kid of today will grow up, he, he or she will be a smartphone user because everybody is a literate body now, even at least the kids, point number one. Point number two, the UPI platform or the Google Play platform are not free of hacking. Uh, and, and there is a huge uh, aspersion that these agencies can leak anytime our private information. Because we are still known to them by our phone number, by our name, by our email ID, and by our PAN and other card number. The moment you issue digital currency, uh, nothing is required. Shomnath is no longer known by the word Shomnath. Shomnath is known by uh, a cluster of, say, 40, 50 letters. That is the beauty of it. That it is, it is transparent. It is very, very secure. It is very fast. No cost for uh, preparing fiat currency, uh, printing fiat currency. No cost for maintaining so many ledgers in so many banks because there will be one ledger uh, uh, and one centralized ledger. And so many transaction settlements are not required because it will be directly settled with the central system. Today, if you issue a check of Allahabad Bank to an HDFC guy, and that HDFC guy issues a check to a State Bank of India guy, the transactions are being settled by a settlement system. Those settlement systems won't be required because a central bank digital currency will be transferred directly. Only the banks, when they will do their interconnection and their settlement, they will do the settlement. That's why there will be, again, three types of uh, digital currency wallets also, which will be between bank and the central bank, between banks and banks, and between banks and common people. It is not clear as yet whether the uh, digital account between banks and common people, whether it will be central bank directly or it will be a central bank approved agency. One is not very sure about it. And uh, things will emerge very soon. But there are many, many benefits and there will be extremely cost efficient. Ex and, and, and so many things will be uh, avoided. So many expenses will be avoided. So many ledgers will not be required to maintain. So many digital space will not be consumed because there are lots of duplications taking place when you are running the UPI platform. Of course, speed is very, very useful benefit of it. And fiat currency in any case is get, in terms of paper currency is get, uh, gradually going down, but digital currency will bring in many, many more benefits. Hope I could uh, explain to you my point. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, Somnath, and thank you, sir, for put, giving us such a beautiful reply also, that he's so much satisfied. Uh, our next uh, student, uh, Mohamed Intikab Malik of PGDF, he wants to also put, to, wants to put some question. Intikab, can you yes, just put it? Good, yes. Good afternoon, sir. It's a pleasure for us to having you. My name yeah. is Intikab Malik. Allow me to have the benefit of meeting you over, over the screen. Thank, thank you, sir. Okay, okay. Let me share. Sir, like you have said, CBDC is totally a concept of digital currency. So, so from an aspect of developing country like India, how challenging this is going to be for an implementation? 
like sir us and america they have very strong internet connection and we don't have such internet connection like sir uh, by I, I i explain it with an example like sometimes we use google pay and phone pay and at the time of transaction we could find some issue like our tra transaction get struck so sir when we develop uh, when we use that uh, cbdc concept how this is going to be uh, so fluent like sometimes if we have cash when we our transaction is struck we do exchange with that cash that facilities this with the help of that cash so sir how challenging this is going to yeah, be yeah yeah uh, intikab thank you so much uh, for raising this question before the answering a question let me uh, give you a, a story uh, about a month back uh, in the evening 7 38 o'clock i was having a zoom call with uh, some uh, startup guys in miami chicago america and in and that was the morning time uh miami chicago that time it was a morning time uh, our evening 7:30 there could be 8 uh, 8 or 9 uh, in their morning and that time the network is not completely loaded and to my utter surprise i found that i was having a lag from his side that means in miami chicago also the bandwidth is a problem so if you say that bandwidth availability is a problem only in india it's not it's it's not correct it's a problem anywhere in the world moreover it's a computing it's a digital system and it's a network of optical fiber and it's at and any time any mechanized system like a human body can be also sick uh, it can it can be down for 2 3 hours so there is no issue on that uh, and and uh, maybe that uh, Uh, today also at times you buy something in in uh, without making any payment uh, pe because people trust you so that's uh, that's that's an extreme position uh, coming to uh, the digital divide in india which perhaps you were trying to indicate that the technology and bandwidth is not equally available in india in every nook and corner of the world let me tell you i am a telecom man 2004 um, uh, i was the cfo of reliance communication in, of india Uh, and being a cfo of that uh, company which was the second largest telecom company at that point of time in india i know what was the condition of uh, digital network or telecommunication network of india from 2004 to 2022 18 years india is had a quantum leap with orbital change in having telecom density and telecom connectivity what has not happened in last 25 years are happening in 25 months now i'm not getting into any color of any political party and that's the, that's the speed of technology development going forward what will not happen in 25 months will happen in 25 weeks and that is the speed by which digital technology is spreading and 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 perhaps the entire country of the uh, we have been completely connected with uh, uh, bandwidth Uh, five years down the line, uh, I don't think uh, one single child of India will be required to climb a tree or go uh, go uphill work to get his digital network connection to to get his uh, digital class. God forbid we don't have any pandemic and we go for physical classes going forward. But bandwidth will definitely be required for doing such transactions with CBDC. And I'm completely hopeful. I repeat, I'm very hopeful that five years down the line. the digital divide which we are talking about will no longer exist in india and the digital literacy will spread much faster than actual literacy because people will have to live life only with digital devices because by 2030 the prediction is you will maybe under the direct influence of only five iots which is your phone is an iot tomorrow 2030 you will be under influence of 25 iots your refrigerator will order your vegetable requirement to a, a bigbasket.com type of organization because you will be under your refrigerator will be so smart that it you don't have to look at the refrigerator and ask for vegetable so i am very hopeful of what is going to come in future and uh, the shape of things and the speed of things at which things are happening in india thank you sir i got your point thank you sir sir Sir, one more question from Mohit Ranjan of PGDM. 
He has put a question that the introduction of CBDCs pose an important challenge that need to be addressed, that is the increased threats to privacy of individuals. Do you feel it's a big challenge and how can it be tackled? Uh, I will connect your question with Mohammed Intikab's question. Uh, Mohammed Intikab's question was that uh, connectivity perhaps would be a big challenge in, in introducing CBDC and literacy because not many of us are used to using UPI, for which I was uh, on a futuristic basis, hopefully I said it will be. But your anxiety is, your anxiety is privacy, right? Government of India and for that matter, any cryptocurrency or central bank digital currency cannot be used without, issued without blockchain. Because uh, uh, no other technology can take care of any currency. And that, if that be so, that technology, uh, digital currency cannot be used without, uh, issued without blockchain. Blockchain it, itself is a very powerful technology. And if you read my articles and my uh, couple of my YouTube channel talks, you will come to know about the fact that blockchain technology is completely encrypted and you are not known by your phone number, other card or your PAN card or, or by your mail ID. You are known by a group of 30, 40, 50 letters. So privacy will not at all be a question uh, in a blockchain-based platform. It will always be secured. So let's hope for the best <laughs> for this digital era, digital. I mean, everything is being digitalized, right? I, I think one day we can't that <laughs> the human beings will be also digitalized some way or the other. Thank you, sir. Now you, are madam, start... you are madam, let me tell you one thing that yes, already technology has also been uh, issued that your pillow on which you sleep at night will be having an IoT, which mm -hmm. will be connected with the doctor's computer system and doctor will be able to monitor whether you are sleeping appropriately or not sleeping appropriately. And so, if a small IOB, is put, you can take an IOB, internet of body with a glass of water, it goes to your stomach and it helps you to take CT scan in 15 minutes, which is required for 45 minutes to one hour today. And not only that will happen, that IOB, internet of body, which is nothing but a sensor and digital signal propagator will get dissolved in your stomach. So uh, those things are also coming. I have written all about it. Yes, uh, sir. So we, are, we, we have entered the robotic stage. Uh, yeah, it is IoT. Uh, robotic stage, of course, will make further wonders, which I'll <laughs> talk to you later. Okay. Uh, there is one question from Somnath. But Somnath, we are uh, being short of time. You just put a question in the second, so that sir can answer. Then I request our department member Rahul Kumar Sinha said to give vote of thanks. Somnath, what is your question, please? Sir, my question to you is, uh, what would be the scenario with people who have invested in cryptos, uh, especially in Bitcoin, uh, if it applies, if this uh, law applies in the country? May I tell you one thing? Uh, in my dream of dreams, I cannot imagine India will be having uh, permission of cryptocurrency. Uh, first of all, India may allow people to invest in cryptocurrency and make profit and loss. If you are making profit, you will be definitely taxed. If you make loss, definitely it will not be allowed to be deducted from your other income. But God help them who, who deals in cryptocurrency. That is only statement I can make. I am deadly against any investment in cryptocurrency. I am talking private cryptocurrency, deadly against. And this I am talking, writing, uh, right from last five years, four years, I am doing all these things that India is not a place for that matter. The world is not a place for cryptocurrency, private cryptocurrency. Well, uh, we can always experiment with digital currency or a cryptocurrency as an investment class. But that is against a huge risk, which I have already proved to you. Those who wants to take risk and make profit, let them do. I don't bother. But I, I, I don't agree with you. I don't have any, any sympathy uh, with whom was made lost in Bitcoin. I, I don't uh, have any empathy for those who made huge loss with Bitcoin. Sir, it means that uh, Satoshi Nakamoto uh, is going to be end, is going to be finished by the launching of CBDC. Uh, to a certain extent, uh, to the extent of people who are dreaming that uh, uh, bitcoins or uh, its its uh, uh, cousins will be a medium of settlement, they will definitely be. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, it's for so many, so, <laughs> giving us so many queries, answers. I mean, the students have endless questions. Uh, I <coughs> now request Rahul Kumar Sinas to kindly give the vote of thanks. Thank you, ma'am. So first of all, uh, very good evening to all. I, Rahul Kumar Sinha, assistant professor and member of the Department of Economics and Finance, ISM Patna, would like to take this opportunity to, to thank all the participants on behalf of the department. I deem it a great honor and privilege to propose vote of thanks to our esteemed resource person, Dr. Paritos Basu sir, senior professor and chairperson of MBA of NMIMS University School of it Business. It is MBA Master. Law, Master of Business okay, Administration sir. in Law, which is first okay, of its sir. kind in India and one of its kind in India. No other university offers that MBA program. Okay, thank you, sir, for uh, giving us uh, valuable time and such a wonderful deliberation. This session was very informative and useful for the students, covering from the past to current scenario, ways of making payment of money and important information about money circulation in the economy, especially number of information about working and history of blockchain technology, origin of cryptocurrency, its criticism and praises, and recent major global developments of cryptocurrency and opinions on CBDC was really a valuable session. I would like to express our profound gratitude to Mrs. Silphi Kavita, ma'am, moderator of the expert talk for effectively managing the event. Thank you very much, ma'am. I extend my thanks and regards to our all team members for their valuable support as no event can become successful without the support of our distinguished management, which always not only supported, but also encouraged to organize events, teaching and non-teaching members of ISM Patna, especially the IT support team. Thank you very much for your continuous support, which made this expert talk emergence of central bank digital currency from the phoenix of cryptocurrency, a grand success. And above all, our heartfelt thanks to our students for their active participation with these warm words, we move to the end of today's expert talk. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And I hope that sometime I'll step into your campus. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. We would love to see you in our campus. And even we are also trying to start the law, uh, I mean, BBA law here. So we'll be in touch with you, sir. Sure, we'll Thank be in touch with you. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, students, for your time. Bye. Thank you, thank sir. You.